class uh, in this uh, global uh, COVID uh, pandemic. This is the time that many, all medical students remaining in the house. It is quite undesirable. But <laughs> it is the situation and it is mostly uh, unfortunate for the clinical students, especially third year, fourth year, fifth year students. Those are placed in ward, ward oriented. But when I heard uh, this Axis Medical School arranged this home oriented lecture class and for the medical students, it is a very good again. So, in this time, you should not kill your important time, especially these uh, clinical students, <coughs> those who are placed in wards, different wards. You can make your, your home as a hospital. This is my advice to you that you can make your brother, sister, even relatives, patient and he will examine them in clinical examinations and that is teeny uh, word. <clears throat> but all these things not possible. But in this uh, uh, internet era, you have arranged this and this is most, it will be most useful for the students and uh, others. <clears throat> so, you know, the, I am Professor of Thonwaji, retired. Uh, today my topics uh, is cataract. Cataract is the most common disease in eye, most common disease in eye and you have to learn this cataract thoroughly, thoroughly, especially fourth year, fifth year and final year students and postgraduate definitely. So <clears throat> today I'll, I am going to discuss about cataract. It is the disease of the human crystalline lens. It is the disease of human crystalline lens. You see the definition of cataract is any cloudiness or opacity any cloudiness or opacity in the normally transparent crystalline lens or its capsule causing visual impairment causing visual impairment is called cataract. So, cataract is any cloudiness or opacity in the normally transparent crystalline lens or its capsule causing visual impairment is called cataract. But literally cataract means large waterfall, large waterfall. Mm -hmm. It does not match with this definition, but it is written. Cataract means large waterfall. 
You say in, I have written here the definition of cataract, but underlying in somewhere, in red in, that is in cloudiness, opacity, crystalline lens, and visual impairment. The three and ফ্যান দেওয়া যাবে না ফ্যানের শব্দ অনেক বেশি আসে Now, I, this is a disruption, so I, I want to uh, run this, uh, 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 I want this background, this is cornea, it is clear and it allows light, behind this there is a small chamber, a small chamber, this chamber is known as anterior chamber, this anterior chamber is filled with aqueous humor, aqueous humor and uh, this structure is known as iris and uh, this iris you can say also iris diaphragm. In the middle of this iris there is an opening. This opening is known as pupil, you know pupil. It can dilate, it can constrict, depending upon the sunlight. It regulates the rays of light. It regulates the light entry. When there will be the bright light, it will it will constrict. When light is when light is absent or dark, it will dilate. It has the capacity. Iris has the two muscles, you know. I do not like to go in this <coughs> portion. Uh, this, uh, behind this iris, you'll see a clear structure. A spherical, biconvex structure. This biconvex structure is known as human crystalline lens. Human crystalline lens. <clears throat> and in front, in behind the iris and in front of the lens, human crystalline lens, this is, there is another chamber, very tiny chamber. This chamber is known as posterior chamber, posterior chamber, where aqueous humor is formed by the ciliary process and it goes to the posterior chamber. So, you have to remind that posterior chamber also contains aqueous humor. Okay. <clears throat> now, this lens, human crystal is clear, transparent, and it is suspended in this position by ciliary, by uh, suspensory ligament or junul of gin, junul of gin, suspensory ligament of gin, this is uh, a suspensory ligament of gin, it is, it is attached with the equator of the lens, this is equator of the lens, to the ciliary muscle and ciliary processes, it is attached in the ciliary body, actually ciliary body, 
ciliary body. This ciliary body is composed of ciliary muscle and ciliary process. This ciliary process projection like a structure, it secretes a cosimer. Okay. Now you see this posterior chamber, anterior chamber, iris, and this is anterior chamber, and behind this is vitreous body. Okay, vitreous body, and it goes later on. I will teach in this portion this posterior segment and up to this anterior segment up to this anterior segment <clears throat> now today our point of discussion about human crystal lens it will crystal clear human crystal lens is crystal clear transparent after birth it is a vascular it is avascular, transparent, and biconvex structure. Biconvex structure. Just lying behind the iris. It lies behind the iris and in front of the vitreous body. In front of the vitreous body, this is vitreous. This is lens and behind this iris. So it lies behind the lens, behind the iris and in front of the vitreous. And it is suspended by the suspensory ligament of gene or junul. You can say junul of gene. It is filament like the structure. And it is attached to the ciliary body, ciliary muscles and ciliary processes in between this and in front of there is posterior chamber many of you miss this point posterior chamber contains aquasimer actually when aquasimer is formed it goes firstly into the posterior chamber now <clears throat> lens has no vascular vascularity no blood vessel in adult but in embryogenesis, during embryogenesis and in intentional life, it was vascularized and it regresses after birth. It was vascularized. <clears throat> if it was vascularized, vessel present, so light transmission was not possible. It became opaque. So, it is a vascular and non innervated no now fiber there. So <clears throat> you see this it has a it has anterior capsule, posterior capsule, and nucleus. I'll see you uh, later. Uh, and equator region. It has the power of uh, Con, uh, convexity that is it can go, uh, 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 it can uh, uh, during accommodation it can change its shape it can change its shape during accommodation it is like globular spherical more spherical but it is now uh, normally it is a biconvex structure okay <clears throat> it has a directing power this lens has a dipteric power which is about 15 to 20 diopters. And in many books you will get it is about plus 18 diopters. Whatever it may be, it varies from 15 to eight, uh, 20 diopters in unaccommodated stage. In unaccommodated stage. This is <coughs> Already you have already I have think uh, you have already written this definition. Now I want to <coughs> draw a <coughs> this.
this enlarging form, enlarged form, if you do cross section, if you do cross section this structure, human crystal lens, then you will see this. Actually, better I cannot draw a note. Now, this is interruption again, <clears throat> now come to the point, uh, it has an anterior capsule, posterior capsule, this is nucleus of the lens, this is cortex, anterior cortex and posterior no, no, cortex. Okay, <clears throat> now in anterior capsule, you see, it is lined by the single epithelium single cuboidal epithelium and it is it has a great role in physiology to maintain the uh, vascularity of the uh, uh, transparency of the lens to maintain the transparency of the lens uh, 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 this uh, nucleus has a great role <coughs> the nucleus has epithelial epithelial nucleus <coughs> epithelium and this uh, cortex, this uh, epithelium become fiber and fiber in the uh, cortical region and this fiber will go to the nucleus and it will form indenser and it will make uh, nucleus. Never no cell in the lens dies. It forms this, uh, this uh, cells will convert as a fiber. This is cuboidal, then columnar, then as a fiber. Actually, nucleus is a dense fiber, actually. This is nucleus. In our cataract surgery, you know, this, this is the opening, and then we uh, evacuate this uh, nucleus and cortical matter okay so <clears throat> you see the importance of this uh, lens uh, this is the epithelium in the uh, lens <clears throat> very very important but posterior capsule no epithelium no epithelium and this is equatorial zone and it is this zone is germinative zone germinative germinative zone that is and mitotic activity of this epithelia going all through and this mitotic activity will form a, uh, this fiber and <coughs> for this mitotic activity it remains very very uh, important role to make it clarity lens must be clear. So, in definition, I told you that cataract is the opacification or cloudiness. This cloudiness. If this clarity is not maintained, then it will become cloudy. So, you have to know this physiology first. How this transparency of this lens is maintained? How this transparency of the lens is maintained? Number one, <coughs> it is avascular. It is avascular in adult lens. So avascularity is one of the point for its maintaining that transparency. Transparency of the lens is mainly uh, due to avascularity of the lens. The how lens will get nutrition? It is a common question, very common question. How lens get its nutrition as it is non-vascular, avascular? So you see here this 
lens, it gets the nutrition from aqueous humor. This aqueous humor coming from uh, producing from the aqueous uh, ciliary process and come to the posterior chamber, even into the anterior chamber, ultimately anterior chamber. So, lens gets its nutrition from aqueous humor, totally, as it is avascular. What is the benefit of this vascularity? Because if lens is vascularized, so light entry would not possible. It was not possible. So to make it clear, so it is avascular. So light is going from this cornea, pupil, to lens. I told you it has a refractive capacity refractive, refraction, not reflection, refraction, about 80% of the refraction done by this here. So light is going and this light passing, passing through this vitreous humor, this vitreous humor and going to the phobia that is in the macula through which we actually see this is the phobia, phobiola. Inside phobia, there is a very tiny uh, uh, point where is, uh, it is known as phobiola and it is situated in the macula. Actually, we see it through its macula, phobia and phobiola. But if any opacity for the transmission of light, it must be clear, cornea clear, across clear definitely, and this people allows to light to go inside and ultimately it goes to the retina that is in the macula. Inside macula there is phobia and phobiola. You have to clear it. Okay, now there is again interruption. So, uh, what about uh, this to maintain the clarity of this lens? I told you to that is the, the role of this uh, vascularity. Number two, the lens <coughs> contains very small number of epithelium epithelium and it allows uh, light okay number uh, number two is it is there is a oxo uh, auto oxidation auto oxidation inside lens it contains reduced glutathione it contains reduced glutathione reduced Glutathione. Do you know what is glutathione? It is reducing substances. It is reducing substances. It reduces the, it uh, causing, it causes the, uh, the clarity of the <coughs> lens. Which is, this reduced glutar, glutathione reduces in amount and lens gradually becoming opaque lens gradually become opaque. Number three is this lens is refraction in all places same, not different. Refractive power of this lens here, 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 all places same. So it is one of the cause of <coughs> transmission of uh, light inside this uh, uh, lens. Now you see uh, this lens, uh, this lens has 
uh, entry capsule which contains the epithelium, posterior capsules no epithelium, it is thicker, posterior capsule a little thinner. This in this entry capsule and nucleus is the cortex. This cortex is nothing but the lens fiber. When it becomes hardened in the metal, it forms the nucleus. It is there is fetal nucleus and adder nucleus. And posteriorly, again this cortical matter, in surgery we say it is cortical matter. This is nothing but a fiber, lens fiber. And in between nucleus and posterior capsule, there are a lot of cortical fibers. Okay. Next physiology is that lens has a capacity to play a role in accommodation. Play a role in the accommodation. Lens, what is accommodation? You know, to see near object clearly, we require accommodation. And lens plays, uh, lens is suspended by the ciliary, uh, by the uh, suspensory ligament to the ciliary body. When accommodation need, the ciliary muscles contracts. Normally it is tight and it is flat. Normally suspensory ligament is tight in a stress condition. When it requires the accommodation, it loses. I mean, ciliary muscle contracts, there is slangs or relaxes of the suspensory ligament. If when the suspensory ligament relax, the change in the shape of the lens. This is, if you think this is lens, no more, it become like this. Like this. So, <clears throat> a little globular, more, entirely it become more curved. So, the power of adapted power increases. So we can see in, at that time there will be the constriction of the people. People will constrict here. That is meiosis. You know the constriction of people is known as meiosis and dilatation of the people is known as madrasis. This is madrasis. If normally this diameter is 4 to 5 millimeters, 4 to 5 millimeters, it can dilate up to 8 millimeters and these people can constrict up to 1 millimeter. Okay, now <clears throat> I told you two physiology here that is the clarity of the lens and accommodation. This accommodation it takes part in the accommodation of the lens. <clears throat> Accommodative uh, reflex you can say or reaction whatever you can say anyone that is in accommodation it plays greater role okay now you see the pumping action of this nerve fibers a cortical fibers is very much because if it is filled, that is this pumping action the cortical fibers pumping action of this cortical fibers is one of the cause of remaining transparent, remaining transparent, okay. <clears throat> then this number of cells are very uh, low in number, uh, change color now, coca, <clears throat> this, these are the uh, factors for maintaining the transparency of the lens, <clears throat> maintaining the transparency of the lens. Now we see this lens, human crystalline lens is full of protein, full of protein. It is made of, totally is 
full of protein. Twice, twice in uh, weight than normal cells. Normal cells, protein contain less than lens protein, <coughs> lens structure. Lens structure is full of protein. Two types of protein we see here. Two types of protein we see here. That is water soluble and water insoluble. Water soluble and water insoluble protein. Thirty-three percent of this uh, total weight is protein. You see, this lens is made of mainly by protein, and thirty-three percent twice. One thing, it is the greatest container of protein in the body. This human histamine lens, <coughs> and this. Water soluble protein is 85%. Water soluble protein is 85%. It's a very good Okay. See here. Number one. Water soluble. Protein. 85%. Okay? And this water soluble protein is three types. Number one, alpha crystalline, alpha crystalline, beta crystalline. and gamma crystalline. Beta crystalline, two types, heavy and light. Heavy and light. Heavy and light. Okay? And this water-soluble protein Mostly seen in the cortex. Water soluble protein, 85%, mostly in the lens cortex, in the cortical region. And it is of three types alpha crystalline, beta crystalline, and gamma crystalline. It is about 85%. This is water soluble. This is water soluble. Now, it is found in the, mainly in the lens. <coughs> now, water insoluble. <coughs> water number two insoluble. It is about fifteen percent. <coughs> water insoluble. Water soluble for the transmission of light. It is easy. When this water insoluble, uh, water soluble will be insoluble, or insoluble will be the soluble, there will be the disruption the physiology of the normal physiology of the lens. Water insoluble protein 15 percent, and water soluble 85 percent. It is mostly albinoid. LB albumin natana albumin <coughs> albinoid like uh, substances albinoid <coughs> albinoid uh, structure <coughs> albinoid structure this and it is found mostly in the lens nucleus lens is a nucleus a nucleus mostly uh, formed by the albinoid uh, protein, that is water insoluble. 
problem is that when man become old this soluble insoluble soluble protein become insoluble with the is the lens protein what was <coughs> soluble it become insoluble so there will be the form of problem is is that there is the cloudiness of the lens or opacity of the lens when the water insoluble protein in uh, water soluble protein will be insoluble so there will be the formation of opacity <coughs> or cloudiness this is known as cataract any opacity in the lens lens is known as cataract that definitely interfere with the vision <coughs> mostly interfere with the vision so this is and this uh, you see this soluble and insoluble protein there is a definitely a balance due to this balance we see the lens is clear crystal clear now we see the uh, epithelium now i uh, want to teach you about the lens epithelium okay <coughs> this epithelium again it is all these types of uh, action require some energy and this uh, main function of this uh, epithelium is to keep the sodium and water level maintain sodium and water level maintain <clears throat> and it is mostly done by this epithelium normal cellular activity normal cellular activity we see here this epithelium to make it clear clear means water water less no entity of water here it is to make it transparent to make it lens transparent we must extrude all waters from here to there no entity of water if water enters into this through entire capsule posterior capsule it will form vacuolation <coughs> water vacuolation and subsequently it will form cataract i will show i will teach next class how cataract is formed by this now you see number 1 what are the activities physiology what is the what are the activities going on here this metabolism and this <coughs> number 1 endomeric pathway endo endem mear ho endomeric pathway it is about 85% 85% this endem mear hop pathway through this the glycolysis anaerobic glycolysis is done anaerobic glycolysis is done by endem mear hop pathway about 80% number 2 this is number 1 number 2 krebs number 2 you see hexose monophosphate sand hexose monophosphate
फॉस्फेट वेरी लिटिल लिटिल इन ये परसेंटेज एंड क्रेप्स साइकिल एंड क्रेप्स साइकिल एक्सोस मोनोफॉस्फेट सन एंड क्रेप्स साइकिल सी आर क्रेप्स साइकिल एंड भर को एक लिखी नहीं बात हमें तो आते लेकर करो एंड सॉर्बिटल पाथवे एंड सॉर्बिटल पाथवे सॉर्बिटल पाथवे नंबर वन एट्टी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ दिस टू मेंटेन द इनसाइड वाटर माइनस और वाटर to get rid of this water contained into the lens, we require glycolysis, anaerobic glycolysis. This anaerobic glycolysis is carried out by endem Meerhof pathway about 85 percent. Number two, hexose monophosphate shunt in this way. Number three, Krebs cycle. Number three, Krebs cycle and sorbital pathway. And sorbital pathway. These are the uh, uh, metabolism is going inside this lens. Can you imagine here? This and main function, main physiology of the lens is that to maintain the water and sodium level water and sodium level inside lens never over never over so this four uh, pathway <coughs> you know this sodium potassium atpa system <coughs> sodium potassium atpa system which generate atp all this 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 ATP is required to stack the water inside to outside. So, it, sodium potassium ATP system is going on. <coughs> yeah. So I am uh, already in uh, physiology and anatomy of this uh, structure, uh, this uh, lens, human crystal lens, that will able to read further in the cataract genesis uh, next class i will discuss actually this uh, human crystal lens is unique and it is about 225 milligram in weight which was started in in, in, in life about 90 uh, milligram that is now to in adult it is about 225 milligram weight and it has a dietary power <clears throat> and without this clarity we cannot see anything <clears throat> now next class what i started uh, in early that is the cataract now to know this cataract you have to the pathogenesis of uh, this uh, formation of cataract so anatomy and physiology of the eye is very very important in this regard Okay, now next class I will discuss about any question you can and uh, uh, you will read this. If you read this anatomy, you will get a, you will not very difficult to understand any diseases because eye anatomy actually a little critical. Critical means you need you see uh, eye structures very. Uh, small, but inside is a very <laughs> sea like Many things you have to know. When undergraduate, we do not require much, but what is the basic you have to know. If any left, next class I will uh, try to <coughs> teach, and next class on cataract, formation, definition, all things.
ओके एनी क्वेश्चन ओके ठीक है थैंक यू नेक्स्ट क्लास नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट पॉसिबली